Okay, now I'd like to talk a little bit about significant figures. And I've often said that uh, these are, this is a concept that's probably one of the best named concepts in all of science. Because significant figures really are significant in our uh, pursuit of scientific knowledge. They're at the heart of being able to communicate what we have learned about the physical world around us. Significant figures represent the degree of precision of a number that we might get from, say, measurement or calculations. In simple terms, this tells us how much we can trust the number. And a, a, a key concept is that a calculated answer can never be more precise than the numbers used in the calculation. So in order to be able to do calculations and report them, uh, based on significant figures, we first have to be able to identify significant figures when they're in a number. So you'll notice that I've got three numbers here on the page, and each number is made up of several digits, or we will call them figures. And some of those digits are significant figures, and some of them are not significant figures. So three numbers, each number made up of multiple digits, and uh, we're going to look at each digit and see if that digit is significant or not. Now to do that, I have four rules that we can apply. A, B, C, and D. And rule D has two subrules. So we're going to go through them step by step, apply each rule to each of these three numbers, and determine which of those digits in each number are significant figures. Before I start this, I just want to say the first rule talks about non-zeros. That's numbers like 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, and so forth. And then all of the other rules are about zeros, because zeros can be kind of tricky, and they require us to look at them a little bit closer to determine if they are significant or not. So let's deal with the first rule. The first rule, any non-zeros are significant. So let's look at these three numbers that we have up here and see which are the non-zeros. And I'm just going to put a little green dot under each one of the non-zeros. And remember our rule A says that those digits are significant figures. All of those are non-zeros that I've marked that way. And so that's our first rule. That's a fairly straightforward rule. Now the remainder of this is to try to figure out if a zero is going to be significant. So rule B says any zero in the middle of a non-zeros, and they are significant. Any zeros in the middle between two non-zeros. Look there, there's a zero in between two non-zeros. So it is significant. Here are zeros. And look, they happen to be sandwiched in between two non-zeros. So they also are significant, according to this rule. That zero is between two non-zeros. This zero is not between two non-zeros. And so this rule does not talk about that zero. So we'll have to leave it. And we'll come back to it later. We have three zeros here, but notice that they are not between two non-zeros. Two zeros here. They are not between two non-zeros. A zero here, and it is not between two non-zeros. So this zero, these zeros, these two, and that one are not covered by this rule because they are not between non-zeros. So that's rule B. Rule C talks about any leading zeros. And this is zeros to the left of the very first non-zero. So here's the very first non-zero in the number. Are there any leading zeros to the left of it? No, we don't see any. So there are no such zeros in this number to worry about. Go on to the next number. Here's our first non-zero. And notice we have a few zeros 
to the left of it. And this rule says that any leading zeros to the left of the first non-zero, and we are going to say they are not significant. So I'm going to put a little red X under each one of those that are not significant. Now you may ask, wait a minute, does it matter if they are before the decimal or after the decimal? No, it does not matter. If they are zeros to the left of the first non-zero, it does not matter if they're before or after the decimal. This rule says that any of them are not significant. Let's move on. These zeros are not before the first non-zero, so they are not considered by this rule. Same for this one. So we have finished rule C. Now we get to rule D. And rule D talks about trailing zeros. And those are zeros to the right of the last non-zero. And they might be. They might be significant depending on one of these two subrules. So, let's look at the subrules. If no decimal point is expressed in the number, if no decimal point is expressed in the number, then we're going to go ahead and say that the trailing zeros are not. No decimal place, no, no decimal point, then the zeros are not. Now you will see in some textbooks that it says that if there is no decimal point, a trailing zero might be, depending on if it is defined or an exact number. That's absolutely true, but we're going to talk about that in just a moment. For now, let's go ahead and stick with this rule, because we're going to assume that we don't know where this number came from yet. So, if we don't know if it is exact or not, then we're just going to follow the general rule that says if there's no decimal point, then any trailing zeros to the right of the last non-zero are not significant. So here we have an example up here. A trailing zero to the right of the last non-zero, and there is no decimal in that number. And so, as a result, our rule says that zero, we're going to treat it as if it is not significant. Again, we can have an exception to that later for exact numbers, but for now, we'll just go ahead and use this as the basic rule. This leads us to the second subrule for trailing zeros. If it is a trailing zero that is to the right of the last non-zero, and if there is a decimal point, expressed in the number, then the trailing zeros are significant. And we have two examples up here. Here's a trailing zero to the right of the last non-zero, and there is a decimal point in the number. And so this zero is significant. Similarly, over here, we have another case where we have trailing zeros. They are zeros to the right of the last non-zero. And look there, there is a decimal point in the number, and this rule therefore says that these are significant figures. So those are the basic rules, the four basic rules, and rule four has two sub-rules.